the adirondacks a journal dedicated to my fellow travelers in august eighteen fifty eight by ralph waldo emerson from may day and other pieces eighteen eighty one wise and polite and if i drew their several portraits you would own chaucer had no such worthy crew nor boccaccio in de camerone we crossed champlain to keysville with our friends thence in strong country carts rode up the forks of the Oswald stream intent to reach the Adirondacks lakes at martin's beach we chose our boats each man a boat and guide ten men ten guides our company all told next morn we swept with oars the saran with skies of benediction to round lake where all the sacred mountains drew around us tahawa seaward mcintyre baldhead and other titans without news or name pleased with these grand companions we glide on instead of flowers crowned with a wreath of hills and made our distance wider boat from boat as each would hear the oracle alone by the bright morn the gay flotilla slid through files of flags that gleamed like bayonets through gold moth haunted beds of pickerel flower through scented banks of lilies white and gold where the deer feeds at night the teal by day on through the upper saran and up pear rucket stream to a small tortuous pass winding through grassy shallows in and out two creeping miles of rushes pads and sponge to fullensby water and the lake of loons northward the length of fullensby we rode under low mountains whose unbroken ridge ponderous with beeches forest sloped the shore a pause and council then where near the head on the east a bay makes inward to the land between two rocky arms we climbed the bank and in the twilight of the forest noon wield the first axe these echoes ever heard we cut young trees to make our poles and thwarts barked the white spruce to weather fend the roof then struck a light and kindled the camp fire the wood was sovereign with centennial trees oak cedar maple poplar beech and fir linden and spruce in strict society three conifers white pitch and norway pine five-leaved three-leaved and two-leaved grew thereby our patron pine was fifteen feet in girth the maple eight beneath its shapely tower welcome the good god murmured through the leaves welcome though late unknowing yet known to me evening drew on stars peeped through maple boughs which o'erhung like a cloud our camping fire decayed millennial trunks like moonlight flecks lit with phosphoric crumbs the forest floor tin scholars wanted to lie warm and soft in well-hung chambers daintily bestowed lie here on hemlock boughs like sacks and sioux and green unanimous the joyful cho change so fast will nature acclimate her sons though late returning to her pristine ways off sounding seamen do not suffer cold and in the forest delicate clerks unbrowned sleep on the fragrant bush as on down beds up with the dawn they fancied the light air that circled freshly in their forest dress made them two boys again happier that they slipped off their pack of duties links behind at the first mounting of the giant stairs no placard on these rocks warned to the poles no doorbell heralded a visitor nor courier waits no letter came or went nothing was polished or reaped or bought or sold the frost might glitter it would blight no crop the falling rain will spoil no holiday we were made freemen of the forest laws all dressed like nature fit for her own ends essaying nothing she cannot perform in a dirondack lakes at morn or noon the guide rose bareheaded shoes flannel shirt and curly trousers make his brief toilette at night or in the rain he dons a circuit which he doffs at morn a paddle in the right hand or an oar and in the left a gun his needful arms by turns we praised the stature of our guides their rival strength and suppleness their skill to row to swim to shoot to build a camp to climb a lofty stem clean without bows full fifty feet and bring the eaglet down temper to face wolf bear or catamount and wit to trap or take him in his lair sound ruddy men frolic and innocent in winter lumberers in summer guides their sinewy arms pull at the oar untimed three times ten thousand stroke from morn to eve look to yourselves ye polished gentlemen no city airs or arts pass current here your rank is all reversed let men of cloth bow to the stalwart churls and overalls they are the doctors of the wilderness and we the low-prized laymen 
In sooth, red flannel is a saucy test which few can put on with impunity. What make you, master fumbling at the oar? Will you catch crabs? Truth lo tries pretension here. The sallow knows the basket-maker's thumb, the oar, the guides. Dare you accept the tasks he shall impose? To find a spring, trap foxes, tell the sun's time, determine the true north, or stumbling on through vast self-similar woods, to threat by night the nearest way to camp? <clears throat> Ask you how went the hours, all day we swept the lake, searched every cove, north from Camp Maple, south to Osprey Bay, watching when the loud dog should drive in deer, or whipping its rough surface for a trout, or bathers diving from the rock at noon, challenging echo by our guns and cries, or listening to the laughter of the loon, or in the evening twilight's latest red, beholding the procession of the pines, or later yet beneath a lighted jack, in the boat's bows a silent night hunter stealing with paddle to the feeding grounds of the red deer to aim at a square mist. Hark to that muffled roar, a tree in the woods is fallen, but hush! It has not scared the buck, who stands astonished at the meteor light, then turns to bound away. Is it too late? Sometimes we tried our rifles at a mark, six rods, sixteen, twenty, or forty-five, sometimes our wits at sally and retort, with laughter sudden as the crack of rifle, or parties scaled near the acclivities, competing seekers of a rumored lake, whose unauthenticated ways we named the lake probability, our carbuncle long sought, not found. Two doctors in the camp dissected the slain deer, weighed the trout's brain, captured the lizard, salamander, shrew, crab, mice, snail, dragonfly, minnow, and moth, insatiate skill in water or in air, waved the scoop net, and nothing came amiss. The while one leaden pot of alcohol gave an impartial tomb to all the kinds, not less the ambitious botanist sought plants, orchids, and gentian fern, and long whip scurpus. Rosy polygonomen, lake, margins pride, hypnum and hiddenum, mushroom, sponge, and moss, or harebell nodding in the gorge of falls. Above the eagle flew, the osprey screamed, the raven croaked, owls hooted, the woodpecker loud hammered, and the heron rose in the swamp. As water poured through hollows of the hills to feed this wealth of lakes and rivulets, so nature shed all beauty lavishly from her redundant hour. Lords of this realm, bounded by dawn and sunset, and the day rounded by hours where each outdid the last in miracles of pomp, we must be proud, as if associates of the sylvan gods. We seem the dwellers of the zodiac, so pure the alpine element we breathed, so light, so lofty pictures came and went, we trode on air, contemned the distant town, its timorous ways, big trifles, and we planned that we should build hard by a spacious lodge, and how we should come hither with our sons hereafter, willing they, and more adroit. Hard fare, hard bed, and comic misery, the midge, the blue fly, and the mosquito painted our necks, hands, ankles with red bands, but on the second day we heed them not, nay, we saluted them auxiliaries, whom earlier we had chid with spiteful names, for who defends our leafy tabernacle from bold intrusion of the travelling crowd? Who but the midge, mosquito, and the fly, which past endurance sting the tinder sit, but which we learn to scatter with a smudge, or baffle by a veil, or slight by scorn? Our foaming ale we drunk from hunter's pans, ale and a sup of wine our steward gave, venison and trout, potatoes, beans, wheat bread, all ate like abbots, and if any missed their wonted convenance, cheerly hid the loss, with hunter's appetite and peals of mirth, and Stillman, our guide's guide, and Commodore, Crusoe, Crusader, pious Aeneid, said aloud, chronic dyspepsia never came from eating food indigestible, then murmured some, others applauded him who spoke the truth. Nor doubt but visitings of graver thought checked in these souls the turbulent heyday, mid all the hints and glories of the home, for who can tell what sudden privacies were sought and found amid the hue and cry of scholars furloughed, form their tasks, and let into this oread's fended paradise as chapels in the city's thoroughfares, whither gaunt labor slips to wipe his brow and meditate a moment on heaven's rest, judge with what sweet surprises nature spoke to each apart, lifting her lovely shows to spiritual lessons pointed home, and as though dreams and watches of the night, so through all creatures in their forms and ways, some mystic hint accosts the vigilant, not clearly voiced, but waking a new sense, inviting to new knowledge, one with old, 
Hark to that petulant chirp, what ails the warbler? Mark his capricious ways to draw the eye, now soar again, what wilt you, restless bird? Seeking in that chaste blue a bluer light, thirsting in that pure for a purer sky? And presently the sky is changed, O world, what pictures and what harmonies are thine? The clouds are rich and dark, the air serene, so like the should of me, what if twere me? A melancholy better than all mirth comes the sweet sadness at the retrospect or at the foresight of obscure years. Like yon slow sailing cloudy promontory whereon the purple iris dwells in beauty, superior to all its gaudy skirts, and that no day of life may lack romance, the spiritual stars rise nightly, shedding down a private beam into each several heart. Daily the bending skies solicit man, the seasons chariot him from this exile, the rainbow hours bedeck his glowing chair, the storm winds urge the heavy weeks along, sun's haste to set, that so remorder lights beckon the wanderer to his vaster home. With a vermilion pencil mark the day when of our little fleet three cruising skiffs entering Big Tupper, bound for the foaming falls of Loud Bog River, suddenly confront two of our mates returning with swift oars. One held a printed journal waving high, caught from a late-arriving traveler, big with great news, and shouted the report, for which the world had waited now firm fact of the wire cable laid beneath the sea, and landed on our coast and pulsating with ductile fire, loud exulting cries from boat to boat, and to the echoes round greet the glad miracle. Thought's new-found path shall supplement henceforth all trodden ways, match God's equator with a zone of art, and lift man's public action to a height worthy the enormous cloud of witnesses, when linked hemispheres attest his deed. We have few moments in the longest life of such delight and wonder as there grew, nor yet unsuited to that solitude a burst of joy as if we told the fact to ear intelligent, as if gray rock and cedar grove and cliff and lake should know this feat of wit, this triumph of mankind, as if we men were talking in a vein of sympathy so large that ours was theirs and a prime end of the most subtle element were fairly reached at last wake echoing caves bend nearer faint day moon yon thunder tops let them hear well tis theirs as much as ours a spasm throbbing through the pedestals of alp and andes isle and continent urging astonished chaos with a thrill to be a brain or serve the brain of man the lightning has run masterless too long he must to school and learn his verb and noun and teach his nimbleness to earn his wage spelling with guided tongue man's messages shot through the weltering pit of the salt sea and yet i marked even in the manly joy of our great-hearted doctor in his boat perchance i erred a shade of discontent or was it for mankind a generous shame as of a luck not quite legitimate since fortune snatched from wit the lion's part <clears throat> as one within as was it a college peak of town and gown as one within whose memory it burned that not academicians but some lout found ten years since the california gold and now again a hungry company of traders led by corporate sons of trade perversely borrowing from the shop the tools of science not from the philosophers had won the brightest laurel of all time twas always thus and will be hand and head are ever rivals but though this be swift the other slow this the prometheus and that the jove yet howsoever hid it was from jove the other stole his fire and without jove the good had never been it is not the iroquois or cannibals but ever the free race of with front sublime and these instructed by their wisest too who do the feed and lift humanity let not him mourn who best entitled was nay mourn not one let him exult yea plant the tree that bears best apples plant and water it with wine nor watch askance whether thy sons or strangers eat the fruit enough that mankind eat and are refreshed we flee away from cities but we bring the best of cities with us these learned classifiers men knowing what they seek armed eyes of experts we praise the guide we praise the forest life but will we sacrifice our dear-bought lore of books and arts and trained experiment or count the sioux a match for agassiz 
Oh, no, not we. Witness the shout that shook wild Tupper Lake. Witness the mute all hail the joyful traveler gives when on the verge of craggy Indian wilderness he hears from a log cabin stream Beethoven's notes on the piano played with master's hand. Well done, he cries. The bear is kept at bay. The lynx, the rattlesnake, the flood, the fire, all the fierce enemies, ague, hunger, cold. This thin spruce spruce roof this clayed log wall this wild plantation will suffice to chase now speed the gay celerities of art what in the desert was impossible within four walls is possible again culture and libraries mysteries of skill tradition fame of masters eager strife of keen competing youths joined or alone to outdo each other and extort applause mind wakes a newborn giant from her sleep Twirl the wheels, time takes fresh start again, on for a thousand years of genius more. The holidays were fruitful, but must end. One August evening had a cooler breath into each mind intruding duties crept. Under the cinders burned the fires of home. Nay, letters found us in our paradise, so in the gladness of the new event we struck our camp and left the happy hills. The fortunate star that rose on us sank not. The prodigal sunshine rested on the land. The rivers gambled onward to the sea, and nature, the inscrutable and mute, permitted on her infinite repose almost a smile to steal, to cheer her sons, as if one riddle of the sphinx were guessed.